So this is a short scene from my first novel, Night of the Borrowed Dark. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the woman in white was eating light bulbs. Simon couldn't take his eyes off her. It was horrible. She found a cupboard on the third floor corridor about six meters from the closet in which Simon was hiding and had begun rifling through its contents. Linens were experimentally sniffed and then idly tossed aside, forming lonely snowdrifts on the floor. A first aid kit had been emptied out as well, its contents separated with a toe and then methodically stamped apart. Now she was opening boxes of light bulbs, shaking their contents out into her palm and holding them up to her face before closing her teeth around their fragile domes. Crunch. It had taken Simon a moment to realize she wasn't looking for anything in the cupboard. She was just destroying whatever was in there. Why? He didn't know. There was no urgency to her movements and a strange look of amusement creased her face. Unfortunately, that meant there was no indication as to how long she was going to stay there, blocking the corridor and Simon's only means of escape. It was pure luck she hadn't caught him. A sudden, unexplainable feeling of dread had made him hide in the broom closet, cracking the door open a hair just <laughs> in time to see her appear at the top of the stairs. Maybe he had heard her without even realising it. Maybe he'd felt her presence or the air her movements displaced. Maybe, maybe the animal part of his brain was taking over all of that prehistoric instinct and awareness you just didn't use in the modern world. Simon didn't know or care. All that mattered was that he hadn't been caught. Suddenly, the woman's head jerked to one side as if she smelled his relief. She spat a dry clot of glass out onto the floor and closed the cupboard door slowly, listening hard for something. Simon froze, taking his hand off the door so it settled back against the frame, hiding her from view. His heart pounded louder and louder. Stop, stop, she'll hear it, she'll hear it. And the floor creaked as she took a step towards him. Don't panic, don't panic. With the door closed, the woman in white was more of a collection of sounds than a physical presence. Sounds that Simon had to put together in his head to figure out where she was, a process that was doing nothing for his heart rate. Periodic creaks, her steps, she doesn't care about being quiet, why would she? Followed by a drawling, rasping hiss, her breathing roughened by glass. And then a series of mechanical pops that Simon realized in horror were her fingers, clenching and unclenching. Had he not seen her with his own two eyes, he wouldn't have believed there was a person out there at all. Just a machine, gaunt and terrible, bearing down upon him. But more terrifying than that was the silence. Silence meant he had no idea where the woman was. Do you want to close your eyes for a second? You or me? Creak. <gasps> Silence. Creak. <gasps> Silence. Simon closed his eyes, then opened them and cursed the sound of both. Everything had become magnified. His heartbeat was thunder, his breathing a storm. The moment stretched maddeningly, and Simon became convinced he could hear the zzzz of his nervous system, the shh of his sweating skin, and finally, beneath it all, the tick of the future becoming the present one second at a time. Silence. The door handle began to turn. Simon felt his stomach contract. The thought of being that close to the woman's hand, somehow, magically, he didn't scream. Most children would have screamed by now. He was sure of it. Creak. Maybe just a little scream. It couldn't hurt. Thank you. <laughs> 